Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of Cancel Culture Series. Um, I'm excited for our, my next guest. Um, you know, he's in the industry, super, super talented. Um, and just he was on the Creator to Creators episode as well. If you haven't checked that out, head over there and check out that episode. But he's here today uh, on this, you know, more of a serious kind of um, podcast that I have. And I'm excited to talk to him and, and pick his brain about this topic. So welcome to the show, my friend. How are you? I am. I am good. I am good. Um. So, you know, this, this, this podcast I started because I felt like, you know, the, our culture and our community, men, the, the black women and the black men don't really have a understanding and I think we've been a little separated or even removed. We don't really have this kind of dialogue. And I feel like this is super helpful for me um, in my journey. Um, you know, just with all that's happening in, in society and particularly with black men, I I don't, I'm, I'm a, I'm a black female. So I don't really know what it's like to be a black man. And I just want to know from you, do you feel the pressure from society to to kind of do you have to dim your light do you do you have to fit a box to feel like accepted um i really i really do especially in how i came in to the industry well for one um i noticed i have a predominantly like white fan base yeah and with that i don't want to um j cole has a lyric about um, they listen to your music to basically feel black, mm. and that, and plus knowing the age ranges of my fan base, I don't like the fact like I don't want to say nigga in the song because I don't want them saying it, mm, and I then see. it falls on me, and then that whole little Kendrick Lamar thing happened. Um, so I feel pressured in my writing, but also, I I didn't come in the industry with you know other with rappers like I didn't come like Lil Wayne and people like that didn't give me the boost up I got it from white artists like you know um, John Oates or Spose mm -hmm. and people like that so with that I feel like I have to hold myself account like hold myself in a different light from them because I don't want to be looked at as a token and I don't want to be looked at as like working with him and I do something it's like oh well, you know just that black kid it's that and this because when me and him first announced that we were doing a song together, his comments was lighting up like, what are you doing that you're working with this guy? And it, I just didn't feel comfortable with it. So I tiptoe in everything that I do. Mm. It, does that bother you? It does, because when you think that way for so long, it becomes you. And mm. now... I'm terrified to post on Instagram. Like, mm. um, I, I posted um, a picture of my cat the other day, and I put it on. I put it on my friends only, and then I thought, no, I I'm loved it. By it. the way, I'm really, thank you. It was so cute. Uh, You're I, so adorable, and your cat. I I want to be able to show myself in that way, and like show like you know like I have I have my cat. I have other things that I'm interested in, but I'm just so scared. Why? So, well. A lot, like my idols follow me and I don't mm. want to you know like not have this image of whatever they think I am so in every post is every post that I have is very strategic I, I planned it right. I sit on that picture for probably a month or so mm -hmm. and even like the stuff on my story anytime I post on my story I have like four people I'm like hey is this a good question for a poll is this a yeah. good picture should I do this it's just a lot of insecurity that falls in it because of I know who's watching so when you like hold yourself up trying to you know stay in this box so you're mm. not being you know the bad kind of black or you're being too much of a good kind of black then you become too focused on what everybody's thinking of you so you mm. can't be yourself yeah yeah wow that's really deep I'm so sorry that you feel um that fear to um post you know and I feel like that's that's I feel like, unfortunately, and, and I saw something about, like, I think Joe Budden podcast show, he was talking about um, how Black men in the industry 
um, are not showing their vulnerability side or their vulnerable side because of like, you know, it's like, oh, well, you have to fit this box and check these boxes. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you're not doing that, then you can't show, like you said, for instance, you with your cat. And I feel like that's really bizarre. I feel like you should do what you want to do as an artist or creator. Um, And I feel like people, and that's when people, when people see that you're free and okay with you, all your facets and like, you know what I mean? Like, that's when you're going to get the the real people that that's going to like you know you're going to change lives like oh my god he doesn't you know he's not just some artist or a rapper black because you know unfortunately we are put in boxes or automatically so i like to do the opposite of what they think i'm gonna do that's that's Mm. for me that's what i like to do but i don't know like do you as an artist um and a, and a creator, do you feel like it is, do you feel like you have a responsibility to withhold that? Yeah. Um, and, and why? And I, why I, that? I feel like I have a responsibility in a, in a ton of different ways. For one, people are listening to me, meaning if they're listening to multiple songs, then I'm affecting their mood and their day. So I don't want to put out too much negativity. So I have a, I have a responsibility to, you know, be positive and put out positivity to help. I have a responsibility to not damage the people around me's image. So if I'm working with John Oates and he's helping me, giving me alley-oops, then I can't be out here saying all kind of wild things and songs and doing too much. Um, I I don't want to damage his brand and trying to build mine. But mm. also I have a responsibility to myself to kind of make my art because if I'm feeling a certain way, somebody else might be. So it's my job to kind of connect those pieces. So it's a lot of moving pieces in it. I had a guy, um, he wanted me to give him a shout out. And he had a song talking about killing and he had girls twerking in it and everything. And I mean, that's, that's cool for you, yeah. but it's not my brand. And it was a whole thing because I couldn't promote that on my page. Question. Now, th- this is just like a, a broad question. Like, you know, you mm-hmm. have your Cardi B's, you have your Megan The Stallions, people that are mad and successful, making millions of dollars. And, you know, you know, me, okay, you have Megan The Stallion interviewing the president of the United States of America. And, she, mm-hmm. and we know what she sings, you know, <laughs> and he was on an interview with her and they were she's got to interview him. She's in these rooms that a lot of people would dream to get in. And she's mm-hmm. talking about twerking and, you know, you know, killing women and all kind of things. Even Eminem. We can go back to Eminem. We can go back to mm-hmm. a lot of rappers and their lyrics. But I feel like that's a form of art because I feel like there are also not just positive things. There's also negative sides to, to people as well. Like right? there's that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the the um, this shadow side of us. And then there's that light and that we kind of wrestle with. Um, and and if you only show the light, which is nothing's wrong with that. But I think, do you feel like as an artist, do you feel like brands or whoever you're, you're, um, your contract with, you can show a little bit of that, of like, this is kind of something I wrestle with, but I don't give into this. This is like ways to go about it to talk about yeah, those things you, you definitely want to have fun and what you're doing and be yourself so i push for myself to be out there but also cardi b one thing i really disagree with her in is mm-hmm. i don't step on nothing she does you know do your thing yeah but she said that she's not trying to be anybody's role model it's not that you're trying to be it's just you fall in line to be because they're going to listen to your music and think your lifestyle is cool because you're yeah. popular and you're on the radio. So mm-hmm. you have that and you're stuck with that. And I noticed in my history as, as a teacher, I'm not trying to be a role model. I'm just trying to do a job. I'm trying to educate, but yeah. I fall in line to be a role model. A lot of these kids don't have dads, especially yeah. the black kids. And they, a lot of black kids don't see a black man in a suit unless it's court or, you know, they're famous. Yeah. So I, I take on this responsibility as part of that job. So in music, it's not that I'm trying to be, you know, this uppity person or be anything outside of that, but somebody is going to. I know I go live on Twitter, I mean, not Twitter, TikTok all the time, and it's these, like, 14, 15-year-olds, 
even 17, like different ages. I have this kid, this guy that's 21. That's like a few years younger than me, but he's there all the time. He's always like sending gifts and stuff on there, even when I tell them not to. Mm-hmm. And anything I do, they're on to every word, which is scary. But at the yeah. same time, I, I'm thrown into this role where I don't want to lead them down no bad path. I don't want to go tell them, yo, we need to be out here robbing and killing and doing yeah. all of this. And I'm just doing it for an image. And then they really do it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be a part of the damage because yeah. it's enough of that. It, you're absolutely right. I, I was I was uh, talking to my dad recently about like how there's a lot of black on black crime. And, you know, you know, with this whole thing of um, how society, like I said, yeah, it's through music, it's through television, through whatever we see um, that we kind of have this image and somehow we emulate those those things. But um, a lot of people you know, when it says like, well, you know, the white man's trying to get us. Well, I obviously, you know, I think really it, they don't have to, because now society, a lot of us are killing each other. Um, and do you, do you feel that, that, that is taught, that's something that we, like your little Wayne's, like, obviously he's amazing rapper. Mm-hmm. not to discredit him at all you have um so many amazing artists out there but their image is in the streets gun violence you got jay-z who turned from from the projects to a billionaire like they're just trying to make a living right mm-hmm. but at this point what do you, do you think that is his responsibility like He's just trying to pay the paycheck and get out of poverty. That's that mindset Mm. of getting out of the poverty mindset to being rich. And this is, and the the companies are paying him. These are what uh, Sony and big record labels who are paying him to talk about these things. So they're not censoring him. They're okaying. Do you think they're part of the problem? Yeah, I think a lot of that is a part of what systematic racism is, where it's like Mm -hmm. they have these systems that want to keep black people down. Like it ain't no way around saying it. Like it was a whole thing. I I I grew up around I've met Chadwick Bozeman. That man meant so much to me for some reason. I met this man one time and he's from my area. So it was just like I don't know. It was just something about him that just felt so important to me. Mm. But even with all of that love I had for him, I wanted them to recast him so bad in Black Panther because they do not want to show a black man with any power. Absolutely. I agree with that. And it may, that's why I was just like, we have to do it because otherwise we don't have, we don't really have these people. And Little Wayne has this quote where he's like, um, this lady asked him about ro- being a role model. And he was like, if you need a model, somebody to show you how to live, you shouldn't have been born. And I can understand that to some degree. But at the same time, people can't help but to like idolize you when you're this person. Yeah. And they fall in line when they say, oh, this is just a character and stuff like that. But some people really take it to heart and it's yeah. damaging, but it's cool. It's funny at times. Vince Staples, he has a thing where he was like, I, I really love his music because he said he don't street, he don't speak like broke stuff. He speak ghost stuff. He's mm-hmm. not talking about like, about like, you know, he's not idolizing crime and stuff like that. He's just saying, yo, we did this, but now we're doing this. Right. He talks about his progression. Not a lot of people do that. Like mm-hmm. Future, he's still rapping about like, like you know, a lot of these rappers still talk, like they're still doing this stuff. And, and I don't Young think- Young Thug, they... the only one I let it slide because he in court because he's still doing it now. So I give him that. <laughs> I give him that one. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like a lot of times, you're absolutely, absolutely right. I think it is systematic racism. I think that's, it's the agenda. I think that's mm-hmm. a part of the contract for some people. Like, you know, you talk mm-hmm. about this forever and we will keep you with a bag. Kind of moving to my point of the industry, you know, with all these uh, black figures in the news with Kanye to Kyrie and this, it was anti-Semitic like conversation going on about like what you can or cannot say um, because it doesn't fit the masses agenda. Mm. Do you fear that? Like, does that, like, I'm sure you've had interviews and which, do you feel like you have to kind of tiptoe around certain things of what, like how you feel about something even now mm-hmm. with certain interviews? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, no, it's um, it just depends because a lot of stuff I feel like you shouldn't speak on because you don't know the mm. point of view. Right. So I grew up wanting to be a preacher and stuff like this. So I was taught that, you know, the LGBT community, that's wrong, this, that, mm -hmm. and this. Then the older I get, the more it's like, so like what's learning. So me growing up thinking, oh, this is wrong. Then it's like, well, I do this and this, that, and this, and this is just as wrong. Well, even if I stop this, that, and this, I can't stop that person. I don't feel like God is going to like dislike you because of this. So it's just, it's your own journey. So I used to tiptoe around stuff like that at first and just say, you know, do what you do, this, that, and this. But I didn't have the knowledge to speak on it. Now I feel like I do. So a lot of topics, I don't have to tiptoe around because I've educated myself in it, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I won't condemn anybody. So I have no, you know, no real topics to try to dodge because I feel like if you speak from your heart about certain topics, even if they're they're hot and you try to speak from an empathetic point of view, then you're never going to be really wrong about it. Hmm. Absolutely. And that's a great point that, that you mentioned, because I, I feel like, like you said, um, you don't talk about such things, certain things that you don't know, like, but, we live in a society where we're in a cancel culture, like where mm -hmm. if you say something says like people behind the computers are going to say, well, he should be canceled or that's not right. And, and then the news will say, oh yeah, he's wrong because he said this. So we have all these bullies running around and this is mm -hmm. like the new, this is like a little scary that society, uh, well, majority, I'm not saying everyone, but majority of people believe that it's okay to speak upon someone's life or call them crazy or, you know, I think it's really dismissive. I think it's wrong to say that someone's crazy because you don't, you don't live with this person. You know, we only see a certain percentage of this person's life on mm -hmm. in the yeah. media. Um, but I wonder how it, like, how does it feel for you do you feel like it's getting better for black men or do you think it's getting worse? Um, I don't think it's either. I think it's very stagnant right now. Stagnant. Okay. I feel I feel like there is like we can have a voice, but it doesn't get us a whole lot, you know, because like they can nowadays they will hear you and ignore you. So I feel like it's not really a point of progression anymore. And all the cancel people, I I don't have a fear of cancel culture just because I feel like the people that they try to cancel, you can see the real ones like the baby when he got canceled, it was kind of like he had it come. He was too arrogant and he mm -hmm. said some ignorant stuff and he said it out of hate. Mm -hmm. Now other situations, if you say how you feel, then people try to empathize like Kanye. He's at a point where it's like some stuff you can try to empathize with. You can try to be like, okay, I get what he's saying. But then there's a lot of stuff that's just like what do you what do you disagree with with Kanye? What was something that he said that was a dis like you were like, oh my God. Like you <laughs> were ashamed. Okay. <laughs> I'm just curious. But maybe and one of the thousand time. things. <laughs> I Kanye was the first non-gospel song I ever heard. Like I have a love for Kanye to where I won't bash him. I'll disagree with him, but I'll never go against him. I have a loyalty for him. All right. That being said. I get the point he was trying to make. It was just very extremist of him the way he went about doing it. It was saying, you know, us as Black people, we need to stick together and mm -hmm. have our own things the way the Jewish people do. Yes, I agree okay? with that, 100%. That being said, he went a little far. He went so alt-right trying to make that point and get that point across that he basically did like a career suicide. Like he kamikaze his point. <laughs> <laughs> so he went overboard in his message with it. So I don't agree with a lot of the, you know, the anti-Semitic stuff. Oh, when he said about what, what, what exactly canceled him exactly? I think I remember. I I remember a little thing, but I don't know what exactly was the, like the thing that popped the bu balloon. You know, the pen that popped. I don't. I couldn't tell you like specifically. I was because I watch an interview and then I hear him say something. It's like. This isn't for me to watch because <laughs> I'm not going to try to paint him in a negative light. <laughs> right. Y'all can have this Kanye. I have my Kanye that I'm a whole beer over here. <laughs> and I'm going to just, you know, I have to separate some stuff. Right. 
so I don't know exactly what he said, but I know he has said some stuff praising Hitler. He said he said some wild stuff. Oh, I haven't heard that one yet, but there's so, so it's many. like <laughs> like he's he's doing like a press tour right now with this alt right um like neo Nazi guy right now. Hmm. And it's I like mean, I listen, I think people can change, right? That's yeah. why he's doing it. And I think that's what he's trying to prove is like everyone just because they that person was a neo Nazi doesn't mean that person can change or look different, okay. see things differently. I think that's what he's trying to show is that just because you're a racist or race or you 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 have a family that looked at black people like this doesn't mean all of you look at people like this but i think it's then it gets like then that means no one can be forgiven right because isn't that god message mm -hmm. everyone can change anyone can change but i feel like to society we are so conditioned to think oh well that's what they are that's what they're always going to be and that's mm -hmm. how they see us and and that i mean i understand what he's trying to do but i don't think society is on that level of his thinking already. I think they're trying to ignore it to focus on the bad because him the bad makes for a better story. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, and I think that's what he knew. I think he knew him saying this isn't gonna get anywhere. But him saying it very extreme will get the core people to listen to the whole thing, to listen for all the crazy stuff yeah. that he says yeah. to get the point. Yeah. So it's like it's a needle in a haystack. He hid the message in there around so much crazy to get his point across. Yeah. Because yeah, I agree I... with a lot of stuff he said, like him saying, you know, like, we need to get paid more for our music and stuff like that. We should have more control over our music. These contracts are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And some stuff, like, he has set an example where it's like, some hills I feel like you should die on. So I, I was working with this girl that's, you know, pretty popular and mm -hmm. Us doing a song, I had I forget what line I said, but I said something like Kanye. Hey, so I don't know what the whole thing, thing was, but I said his name, and she was like, "I don't feel like you should put this, that, and this." She started bashing Kanye. I just stopped responding and being like, "Well, I don't want to work with you anyway." But then, like, I saw her last name just the other week was Rosenbaum, mm. and I was like, "That makes sense. Okay, <laughs> maybe I was wrong in that situation. I get it. I get it." <laughs> And, like, labels now, I just cut ties with a label because, like, I was very excited to work with them, but I just, some stuff I just can't get with. So, I, I understand, understand his that. point. Some hills you have to die on, and yeah. you take a you take a big negative impact from it, but I yeah. get, you get your point out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you feel like, um, like, even with the Kyrie Irving situation that he read? you know, posted something that he wasn't even involved in that, you know, he wasn't allowed to play. And obviously how bizarre that was. Um, how do you think black people or black, specifically black, black men, how do you have your own voice if you're working within the industry? Um, sometimes you have to play ball to get your point out there. And it sounds bad because I am 100% against Coonan. I do not like it. I hate it with a passion. <laughs> that Anytime means I tap see these dancing, men out here, for those who don't know, tap dancing. <laughs> I, that's, that's probably my new favorite word because I use it a lot because it is nothing I hate more than a Coonan. <laughs> and I, feel, I guess it's a bad word now, but I, that is my, no, that it's, is my it's pet great. peeve. It's great. I use it sometimes too. <laughs> but sometimes you have to tap, sometimes you have to tap dance a little bit, but <laughs> I'm not going to go, you know, full dance, you know. Sometimes it's a little leeway you can give them, but not too much. And so I get it. Sometimes you have to. Uh -huh. And I feel like that's the only way because, like, you know, Kanye, the first thing he did with the um, Trump thing, when he yeah. played ball with Trump, we got a lot of stuff out of that that people didn't pay attention to, mm -hmm. but he looked a little bit crazy because it was Trump. So sometimes you play ball a little bit and you give. So with um, my song D&D &D with John, I had to take a lot of um, token roles where it was just like, I'm working with this, you know, this black artist is that and this. And I was like, you know, I, like, we, obviously, we know look at me. The name is Sirvon. They're going to catch on eventually. You look know, at they, me. You don't, have to say it. <laughs> you don't have to say my, what I am. I, I mean, I, but, I, it, but it, it helped. I played ball and I got mm -hmm. a good return out of it. So, you okay. know, hey, we good. Good. But good. 
you can't you can't go too far. Yeah. And I know my levels of it, so yeah. Yeah. Um I you know, I I love I love I love that you're very optimistic about this. And and you know, myself too, included, you know, we're in the industry where it's very I mean, I, I my entire circle just about is very white, you know, um and but I know who I am within that circle. Mm -hmm. So I understand what you mean. I feel like we all, whether it's, I'm not just going to say white, but it could Indian, whatever, like that's non-black, you know, I know, I think it's knowing your purpose and what you're trying to do, whether whatever direction you're going in your life and the industry. um, I mean, for me, I, I mean, I've had help mainly, and I think we kind of touched on this in the last interview that we did. Um, I've had a lot of help from people that were non-Blacks to start my career, a lot of mm-hmm. them. Um, and I'm very grateful um, to to them. But also, I feel like because they're in a different category than I am, it's easier to lend a hand. I feel like people, mm-hmm. they, you know, if they're we're in the same category and we're same we're fighting the same thing it's going to be a little different because i mean Mm -hmm. i know friends that are in the same category like a lot of actress friends that are non-blacks and who are a little low-key competitive with each other and i feel like that is in every different kind of group but um do you feel that it's are you labeled an independent artist are you do you do you Mm -hmm. Okay. So as an independent artist, do you feel like it's, you have more freedom versus being a part of a label and being independent artist for me, I don't know, for me, it means I have more freedom to say what I want to say and do how, like have being more control of my narrative. Do you feel that way in your industry? Yes and no. Cause being independent means I can say whatever, but I also don't have the fan base to fall back on all the time. So I don't really have that safety net. So I can say whatever I want to, and I can make any kind of song I want to make, but am I going to keep my circle intact if I do so? That's always been my, that's always been my conflict Mm. because I can speak up and I can say whatever or whatever. And that's fine. That's the freedom of being independent. But once you make that claim, you don't have like a PR team that's going to come and fix it. You don't have people that's going to put your song in commercial to keep you generating your money and everything like that you take a lot of hits so you do have to censor yourself a good bit and even if you're not even playing ball for you know for the core people you still have to do it for the masses and try not and try to protect everybody's feelings Mm. that's what i think i see what you're saying that that's yeah that's very that's like the kind of the the downfall of (laughs) being independent but also Mm -hmm. like it is a freedom to be able to speak what you want, because I think, you know, I've had, I've had, I've, I've made the decision to be independent in myself for, uh, at the beginning, I could have went, um, I, I kind of like toggle. I'm like in between. So I do, you know, very, um, corporate things and I do my own thing. And I, mm-hmm. I kind of juggle back, but I still can kind of toggle between two but i'm still listed as independent because i'm scared if i go mainstream i might lose my voice and then i have to change my whole my whole you know um persona in a way you become Mm -hmm. one of one of their puppets Um, i just had that lately that's why i cut ties with this label because tiktok right now is ruining music so bad where people come up with these really stupid hooks and then it's a meaningless song and then that blows up and it'd be famous for like you know they get their 15 seconds then it's whatever Mm -hmm. the label i was about to work with i have a song that i'm like really conflicted about but i'm also very like passionate and proud of and I sent it to them and they were like, okay, we love this, but we want something a little more tiktok and sound like this and follow this structure. And it's like, I don't want to fall into that category. Like, right. like I told you, I'm like how we talked about Tyler Perry. Yeah. I have been screaming anti-TikTok for so long, <laughs> anti-Tyler Perry for so long. <laughs> that if I pop up in the next Medea movie, if I pop up with another TikTok song, I'm going to be a hypocrite. I'll be a lot of things before I be a hypocrite. So you know, I I can't do it. No, I feel that I can't. I can't see you doing like a 
TikTok thing. I, I just can't see that. I mean, I mean, hey, it's hard. <laughs> but I feel like you can play ball, like you said, and and put it on there, but still do it your way, but still put it on there. Mm -hmm. But what you want. Just Regardless like, and that's what I did with this song, and they liked it. It's just they wanted the hook to pop more and do certain things. Mm. And I'm like, at what point is this song not my song? At what point is yeah. this song not original and and lack meaning? So that was just a hill I have to die on. So I feel like I've, I maybe I, I've already accepted the fact that I'm not going to be this big Drake artist, and I have come to terms with that because. At least I did it. What did what I wanted to do? At least mm -hmm. I made the sounds that I wanted to make. So the new song I'm working on is like, kind of like a garage band song, like a rock song. Nice. And it was a risky move because I'm rapping on it a little bit. It's just a little bit of everything. Yeah. I and love it that. sounds like a it sounds like an R and B song with some raps on a rock beat. So yeah. it's a lot to go off, and it's it was risky, but. If it flops, it flops. But I, I it's a hill I had to die on. I did what I wanted to do. That that's and that's the freedom, and that's what I love. And this journey is that we at least you did what you want to do, and that's the cross that you have to bear. And that if you're okay with that, then screw any screw everything else. If you're okay and have that peace within yourself, that is what's worth it. And I think it's just we're again society telling us what's what what a black man should make, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. but. Uh, yeah, no, I I love that you said that. That's that you're okay with that. So hey, um, that makes me happy. Um, thank you for for coming on and, and talking. You know a, a bit about this topic. I mean, obviously, this is an ongoing conversation because there's so many um, black men in the news that we see being kind of censored for telling their truth. Um. And hopefully by us talking about it and 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 having a conversation that it starts from there and hopefully that that's a small change somewhere that we can see, you know, at least hopefully this helps somewhere. Yeah, every but, little bit. Yeah, every little bit counts. Thank you again. I appreciate you coming on. Where can people find you on social media? Um, I am Servon, C-E-R-V-O-N, Campbell on everything. It's up Instagram where I am sex monkey limo driver. <laughs> I love that. Um, thank you again. Happy holidays, everyone, and and happy new year to everyone. Thank you again. And you're always welcome back to come on. I always love talking to you because it's really good insight to just understand like from your position. Everyone, please follow him. He's amazing. Please, please. download the music. Check out his Instagram. He's absolutely incredible. Until next time, live, love, laugh. Bye, guys.